Hello guys, uh, welcome again to the channel. Um, thank you, to start with, thank you ever so much to the ones that have subscribed the uh, the channel so far. We have got now 63, last time I've checked, subscribers. Um, as I said, this channel is not about the numbers of subscribers, but more to um, have a relaxed and fun approach to what me and my uh, six-year-old and three-year-old uh, do with the um, RC cars, mainly um, RC crawlers. We do have a couple of uh, one baggy, one basha, um, and uh, like a little radio control tank um, that we take out once a year in every blue moon, but mainly we do the um, scale crawlers. <clears throat> um, one thing that I never tried on the channel, um, on the video side of things, is that with the scale um, crawlers, I do a lot of tinkering and messing about and changing some of the settings and things like that. And my channel so far has always been about doing videos on with scale driving if that makes sense. Um, and I've I never done any videos about um, how to do this and how to do that. Uh, and what I actually do backstage, because I do a lot of maintenance and fine tuning and changing bits and bobs and parts that eventually break. And yes, on the RC world, um, whoever started on the RC world will probably mostly agree with me that it's not if something is going to break is when something is going to break and you'll have to repair it. One of the good things about um, the RC world is that you learn to be a mechanic yourself. Um, so you, you kind of teach yourself how to be a mechanic because you say if a light breaks down or <clears throat> if uh, one of, for example, on this um, FMS Land Rover Series 2, if uh, one of the spring leaves um, brakes or an axle brakes, you're not going to take the car to your local shop. You're you're going online, you buy the part, and then you kind of try and watch some videos on how to replace or read the manual, which is, yes, is something that we men don't typically do, is read the manuals. So today's video um, is going to be about this particular car. Um, I've got another one on order, which is the Rock Hobby uh, Willys Jeep. Uh, 112 release Jeep uh, and it will probably have exactly the same problem as this had uh, when I took it out of the box brand new and it is because this is um, a leaf spring suspension um, it is normally very stiff and there's a couple of things that you guys can do if you have this this car or any other um, um, say FMS or any other radio control crawler that uses leaf springs. Um, there's a channel uh, called Hoff's Place. Check out his channel. Um, he's done a couple of mods on his own uh, FMS um, Land Rover Series 2 uh, that he seems to be very happy with. I watched his video and I kind of done things ever so slightly different than he did. But by all means, check his channel. It's called Hoff's Place. He does a lot of reviews and he does a lot of uh, uh, lovely videos. So check his channel on that note. So what what Hoff's has done, he basically took the the whole leaf spring uh, out and he shaved these, these hangers here. He shaved the internal bit so he would leave more space for these, these bits to uh, move freely. <clears throat> and then what he done secondly was he took all of this mumbo gizmo out and he took a few of these um, leaves out I don't know if you can see there's actually several um, leaf springs bits here which obviously um, make the whole leaf spring suspension but as you can see on mine at the moment it's very very softy softy and smooth and that's what I've eventually done differently than than um, Hoff's place um, done so I like to do things my own way and I like to do things differently and one of the biggest problems and I say probably the bigger problem with, with these FMS uh, spring leaves is that 
these little screws here that keep the leaf springs attached to the body on the hangers, they are very, very tight. Um, and with that, because they, are, they come tight on, as a factory setting, they will not allow the end of the leaf spring to move freely. And as you can see, mine is moving. You can see the movement at the end of it quite freely. But when it comes out of the box, it, it's so tight, that screw there is so tight that it basically squashes this against one another and does not allow for that little movement there at the end of the spring leaf. So what I've done, and this is why on Hoff's Place video, you can see him trimming the insides of these plastic hangers to allow a bit more space so it moves freely. However, I've done things ever so slightly different without having to take none of these um, spring leaves. Um, and what I've done basically is something very, very, very simple. I took these screws out and I took the, the whole leaf springs, um, leaf springs out. And at the end of each leaf spring, you've got like a little, um, oh, what's the bloody name for it now? You've got a little ring, metal ring inside these leaf springs that supposedly allows for that sort of movement. Okay, but because the screw is so tight, it will not allow the leaf spring to move. So what I've done, I've taken all of this out one by one. And obviously you start by taking the screws out. And they, they normally go that way, that way, that way, and that way. And then I picked up a bit of, you don't need to use um, this particular type of grease, any grease, any waterproof grease will do the trick. And what I've done pretty much was, I took the, um, the metal ring inside each end of the spring leaf L, um, took a bit of grease out and greased the metal ring uh, and then put a bit of grease on each hanger, each plastic hanger, and then put it back together. And the trick is, when you put your screws in back again, you don't tight them as much as it comes out of the box. You use a bit of um, thread lock or Loctite or whatever, uh, screw uh, glue, and then you put the screw back, but you never, never fully tighten the screw. Or obviously what the thread lock will do, it will keep the screw in place without having to be too tight. And that, in the end, that free, that little free play with the grease will be, in the end, what allows for that movement like that. Because that, that movement like there, you don't have it. This movement here, where you can see it moves, the whole end actually has enough space and grease now to move. And you can see this is now what exactly you want. You want a soft spring leaf. And I didn't I didn't do any videos um, as it was before, but you can check on my unboxing video <clears throat> and the running video that the spring leaves are actually quite stiff. You have to put a lot of pressure for the spring leaves to only move that much, pretty much. But with this little trick I done on, on, on this FMS Land Rover Series 2, you can see the end of the spring leaves now moving freely. And that's what you get, see, pretty much. Obviously the front is a bit more tight because you've got all of these, you've got the steering arms and the, uh, the bars and all of that stuff, whereas the rear doesn't have anything. So the rear will move a bit smoother than the front, but now you've got a car that actually, um, with spring leaves, that actually work almost as a normal suspension. Obviously this is probably a bit too, too big to, to test it, but now you can see the deflection on, on the spring leaf, whereas, and you can see that that is still touching the, uh, the table. So I'm gonna kind of try and lift it as much as I can. So 
I think that that is pretty much the limit, but you can see how much it actually, how much it goes up. Now, with the rear wheel still on the table. Whereas before, right out of the box, it would be pretty much that, that little bit, and that wheel will, would have been in the air because there was no flex whatsoever on the spring leaves. <clears throat> so again, I'm gonna start doing a few more videos on how to do stuff and what I do backstage with my um, RC cars, either being the, the, the buggy, the busher, or the um, FMS scale or the 110 scale I've got. Um, so I'm gonna start doing a few more videos on how to do a bit of maintenance, how to change parts and things like that, because you know, again, parts will break um, and um, you will have to learn yourself, you have to learn and teach yourself how to uh, replace them. Thank you so much again to the ones that have subscribed. Um, lovely mug. <coughs> Given by me by the wife, obviously, there I say, she was probably taking a piss. Um, thank you again for the ones that have subscribed. Um, a lovely job, Lee. Um, and I'll see you all soon. Cheerio.